Well, we're back. And uh, so is this darn little thing. You can see, uh, I have a habit, I like to put it out on the dirt roads for the videos because, but it has an exhaust now. That's number one. Number two, Red's all cleaned out, got the seats in it. Still need to, still need to get a bracket for it because I don't have those. But we're gonna work on building a bracket here soon. And uh, otherwise, yeah, power's right there. So. You can see also interior almost done. Still haven't put the screws in for the friggin' uh, bezel on there, but otherwise. It's a little dirty. And I still haven't put the lower dash back on. Here it is. Uh, this is the uh, this is the 80 once more. Once in uh, up in living. Still haven't done much of anything with the paint, but uh, been a little bit preoccupied with a lot of other things with this thing. So uh, shut it off here. And uh, pop the hood. Oh, come on. Sometimes it doesn't like to pop up. Remember, you remember in the last video I said I'm not going to show you this because it was kind of nasty. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I haven't changed really anything other than I put a radiator in it. But, uh, still got the, still got that 81, or sorry, that still has the 71 in it from uh, my 79. Um, you can see it's a little bit weirded up in here because we did a complete emissions delete on this thing. So EGR, EGRs are plugged down there and then uh, lost the hose for this side, we only have the uh, hose right here for that one. But as you can see, it's got, an, uh, got a new radiator in it finally. But you can also see it blocks really white. And that's because, well, there's a little story behind this. I was uh, driving it down the highway for a while. This thing's actually a blast to drive down the highway. And uh, driving it down the highway, Went about 40, mi 40, 50 miles, it was fine. Turned around, come, come back, and made about 35 out of the 40 or whatever. You know, I was like five miles from home. And uh, realized, it was actually on this road out here. There's a big old hill over there. Coming up that hill, it's really, really had my foot in it. And then we got out into the straight and I had my foot on the floor and it was like holding speed and I was like, okay, uh, problem. So I went to coast in, or I went to pull into the truck stop that's right down the road here, pushed in the clutch, low oil, low oil pressure light came on. I was like, oh crap. Shut it off, rolled into the stop, belts loose. Oh mother. But coasted into the stop and Lo and behold, the radiator had given out, and since the radiator gave out, it didn't hold any pressure in the cooling system, the coolant all boiled out of the motor, and well, it got overheated. So this thing now burns, burns oil, which really is a shame because this motor was like just beautiful. It still starts up like it always used to, you just touch the key. Yeah. Runs wonderful, but you can pull that hose out. You can't really see it now, but it's uh it's puffing oil. So we're gonna have to get a new motor in here. But it's just given me more time to think about what I want to do with it. So, if you remember the first video of these things, I showed you that I had a chance to buy like an F-350. Well, turns out he doesn't want to sell it anymore. So, looks like I'm going to be keeping this for a while. And, well, that's given me time to think about 
what I want to do for swapping in here. Um, I've looked up a lot and I've seen a lot about the EJ22 swaps. It doesn't look all too hard except for the fact that I don't have any of my tools here because I'm on the glorious state of Camp Pendleton here and I'm not back home in Wisconsin. But uh, thinking about EJ, EJ swap possibly. What I think would be a lot of fun would be to find a little diesel or find a like an old I'm a big fan of like Polaris stuff so like the old XLT triples make one of the because those things make you can make them make about 125 horse and it wouldn't be all that difficult so I think it'd be kind of cool to put a XLT triple here under the hood and if I could even use the original clutch a snowmobile clutch the CVT so I could use the CVT and then put the secondary under the transmission the clutch pedal would then become like a it have to make it turn it into like a brake to stop that secondary but then you could have a CVT four speed kind of weird concept but uh, I think that it'd be pretty dope but yeah anyways um, that's the biggest deal that's happened with this thing recently. Otherwise, uh, I've just been driving it, honestly. You still see it's still got the California plates on it because I actually haven't <laughs> I haven't gotten the registration done. I have the paperwork to do it, but you see it's got 124 on it now instead of 123 something. But, yeah, we're just living the life. My, uh, 240 Bravo shifter handle, which is uh, not bolted, not doesn't have a nut in it, so it's not screwed in. So I got a piece of heater hose to space it out, and then friggin', I don't have anything for the four wheel drive yet, but yeah. See, the, the carpet's a little cut up, but I did go through and I did put the, the brown door panel on this side, so now we have brown on both sides, except for the fact that window crank well I only have black ones because the plastic from the brown brat broke off and if I'm gonna be completely honest I misplaced it so that one I took off the door and like swapped it that day but this one I think I had the other black one yeah I got the other black one here too so what I might end up doing is I might end up going with a black door crank because that's the only ones I can find as of this moment. But, um, yeah. I know I say it hasn't been a lot done to it, but the uh, biggest thing being I can start it and you can have a conversation. You can have a conversation in here while going down the road at 55 because this thing isn't lot loud because the exhaust doesn't end here anymore I took it to a little a little shop they redid a whole system for me comes up there and they were really good about keeping it all tucked up really high so I didn't really I didn't lose any long ground clearance to this exhaust which I'm really digging and it's still it's still a little loud you know like you can hear it but it's not so loud or it's not so yeah it's not so loud that it's annoying it's just like a just like a cool little little tone to it but I'll show you here freaking uh, too loud. That is, of course, until you want to hear the boxer. Then you can really rev it up and let her sing. 
then you can really start to tell it. So uh, you can hear that boxer once again, but yeah. Um, but that's about all I got for now. Um, is things starting to get complete? More or less. Um, except for the fact that it, it still diesels a little bit when you shut it off. Because I'm pretty sure that the solenoid, the anti-diesel solenoid is stuck. But that's a... That's going to be one of those things where I'm going to take it apart and it's going to take a little bit of time. And I don't have the tools to really take apart that kind of stuff. So It'll get there when it gets there. But until then... It's still, uh, it carts me around just fine. Uh, these tires are a little bit smaller than what was on it when I bought it. These are the ones that we had put on brand new on the other Brat. <coughs> Excuse me. These are the ones we had put brand new on the other Brat. So these tires, like I said, these tires are pretty decent. And uh, for those wondering, Nankang CX668. Uh... We're here in California. I found a shop that would mount, balance, and dispose of the old ones for 220 bucks, which isn't all too bad in my opinion. These are the ones that were on the that were originally on here. You can see they're uh, they're junk, but these ones are uh, these ones are 185 70s, and these ones are 175. A little smaller, a little narrower, but probably a little smaller. Um, not a big deal. It's the ones that are supposed to be stock on the door panel there. The speedometer's off by like three or four miles an hour, but that's not too big an issue. Um, no, it's just the little things. The only thing that I'm finding really trippy is now when you're driving it that's about operating temperature so that was my that was probably the reason my fault part of my fault as to why it uh, why it got hot is because I was expecting operating temp to be in between those two dashes but with the new radiator and I have a new thermostat in it um, it usually sits eh, just a little bit below that it's a little bit warmer because it's been sitting here just idling in the dirt, but um, yeah. And when I uh, when I bake when it was baking, the temperature was probably about where my fingernail is. You know, about halfway up the halfway up the gauge. So that's uh, that's a no bueno. I'm gonna look into getting some um, other gauges. I just gotta find a spot to mount them. Probably put like here. I might put like a an oil or a, sorry a water temp water temp here and then put like a volt and the oil pressure like there or something. I'll have to figure out a way to do it because I'm just worried that if I try and do a, a lower dash mount that I'm gonna like kick it every time I get in it or once I get this lower valence on down here that's gonna come down to like here so that's kind of gonna be out of the question. But yeah. We're also working on, uh, we still have the black seats in it, but what we're thinking about doing is we're gonna get them redone because now that we have, we do have a black dash pad, but everything else from in here, even this, we're gonna put the gray one of these in, the, the gray shrouds, and it's gonna get the gray lower dash here. Um, we're thinking that we're gonna get maybe a black, this part redone in black, and we'll get this center piece done in a brown. And I think that'll be kind of neat. And one more thing is that now that we are now that we're going to be keeping this thing for a little bit while longer, I think I'm going to start looking into getting it uh, getting it painted. So what I'll do is I'll take this trim off. I'm probably going to fill it with Bondo because we don't have the we don't have the inserts for the trim, anyways. So it's just the chrome and it kind of looks kind of janky. Probably leave the lower stripe on though. We'll see how it looks because it'll have the lower, we'll have this, and we'll have the rain guards here. Take the antenna off, fill the holes there, do something else for the antenna. 
but um, we're look I'm thinking about repainting it and I'm thinking about redoing it in a nice little shade of blue like uh, like the blue right there I think I could see this whole car being that shade of blue and I think it would look pretty pretty sweet looking um, you know it won't be factory color but it's already three colors as is you know it's peach it's red it's four colors peach it's like faded red black and then it's like dark red in some places up there and freaking there so. yeah um gotta straighten the bumper but hey you know it's a work in progress you know i can't complain because it still works. It still does a job and it gets me where I need to go. Um, it drove me down to San Diego the other weekend and, you know, it's about an hour's drive there and back. Especially in this thing because you only do, uh, you only do it in like, friggin' 65, 70 maybe. You're not, fun. you're not going to do 80 in this thing. When you're doing 70 in this thing, I mean, it's, it's floating like a boat and it's, uh, I don't want to say it's kind of scary, but it's uh, about as much as you want to take it. I had it up to like 75 on the way back, and it was it was cruising. It was very much cruising, and I had my foot on the floor the whole time. So doesn't like that for fuel economy. This thing does really good on gas, as long as you don't take it over like 55, 60, or pull any super long hills at that speed. Um, for me, I had, uh, for, since we're, we are in California, you know, it, it starts to get kind of hilly when you get south. So going up and down the hills kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah. Little thing. Little thing does a job. But, anyways, if you, uh, if you keep on liking these videos, I'll keep put, putting them up. So, keep you guys updated um, even if you don't I probably will but you know why not have a little taste of history in your life every here and there with the 1980 Subaru that you never see anything of anymore but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope the freeway wasn't too loud you could hear me this whole video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one and uh, hopefully I'll have some more progress done by then Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.